we stand as we have a silent prayer up here. I'd like to invite you all to open your hymn books to hymn number 18, O Worship the Lord, number 18. For this morning is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, starting in verse 43, going till verse 45. And it says there, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also be with this wicked generation. As we contemplate these words, I would like to invite everybody to kneel down. And Chris, would you lead us in prayer, please? Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come here today together and to be able to hear a message. I ask, Lord, that you please help us to be able to open our hearts and to be able to receive this message in good faith and goodwill. I ask, Lord, you please help us to be able to affect those around us in a positive way. And please help us to be able to consolidate it and teach it to those who may need it. I thank you, Lord, for keeping us all in good health and good blessing and for the many privileges we have to be able to uh, study, to be able to hear these things. And I ask, Lord, for your providence. 
as we continue on with our lives. And thank you for everything you've given us and for all the people we have and everything. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to each one of you. I was up here during Sabbath school and I find myself up here again. But I welcome you all, all those who are regulars, all those who are visitors, all those who we don't see too often. We're very happy to see you. We have the Dumitru family here with us, uh, Sister and Brother Gianni over there and Eleone over here. We're happy to see you joining us today. May God bless us in this service and in all that we do today. Uh, just a few announcements. We do have lunch and um, lunch following the divine service. Um, we do ask that those who are able to help set up for the lunch uh, and so that everything can go smoothly. We also have young people's meeting at 2.30 p.m. So we invite you to stay for that program. And um, due to different circumstances, we do want to announce that they that, we will be, that there will be no prayer meetings until September. We will resume prayer meetings in September. Um, and then next week, we do have, well, the music, camps, music camp begins this Wednesday. And as a result, we will have guests here in our church next Saturday. Um, so I haven't finalized this, but it would be nice to, to be able to have another lunch together. Um, I will talk to whoever, to the necessary people, and we'll see what we can work out, and then we'll announce it on the group chat if that goes forward. But we'll, I'll, I'll make sure to announce that. Um, and then also, for those wanting to be part of the Music Camp Choir, so those who would like to be part of the choir, who can't attend on a regular basis, but who would still like to be part of the choir, um, there will be a practice this next Friday evening and on Saturday afternoon next week at 4 p.m. So if you want more details of that, please come and talk to me. I can give you more details. I can even give you the sheet music if you would like to start practicing on your own. Um, but please, if you, if you have an inclination to be part of that, we invite you to join us for that. Um, the following week, July 16th, there will be a conference-style Sabbath in Mariah Heights. So we will be closing this church on the 16th, and there will be um, lunch. There will be a afternoon program, a musical program. So we invite you all to be there on the 16th of, of this month, um, in Mariah Heights. And then also the Music Camp concert will be on the on July 17th at 6 p.m. at El Camino Fundamental High School. So if you would like to be there, um, 6 p.m. El Camino Fundamental High School. There will be flyers. Um, Brother Isaac is finalizing them, so we will distribute them as necessary. And please invite your friends to go with you. You can use this as a, a chance of outreach for the community, for those who you're close with. Bring along your friends. Um, anybody who is willing to be there, we invite you to bring them along as well. And I forgot to put this in the in the in the announcements that I gave Eddie. He might be a little mad at me, but don't forget to if you're able to register for the women's retreat, um, you can um, talk to me if you want more details about that. With these announcements, I invite the ushers forward to collect the tithes and free will offering. May God bless the offering that was collected 
and may it be for his honor and his glory. I invite you all to please stand once more as we, as we open our hymn books and sing hymn number 85. Number 85, Jesus, the very thought of thee. Today we are blessed to have Brother Moreno and his family with us, and we invite him now to speak from the Word of God to us along the title of The Danger of an Empty Heart. May we have attentive minds and hearts, and may God impress his truth upon us. Jesus began telling the Pharisees, and the disciples were there too, and he says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So I would like to dwell on, on these uh, few verses here. Before this, Christ was talking to the Pharisees, and he told them that they were an evil and adulterous nation. This is found in Matthew 38, 39. I'm not going to read all the verses, so if you are taking notes, you may continue. But verse 41 through 42, Jesus said that, the Ninevites and the Queen of Sheba will be more favor in their sight than them, than the Pharisees. Why? Because he said at the end in verse 42, a greater than Solomon is here in reference to himself. And then in verse 45, he says that this also shall pass to this wicked generation. And then he went ahead and spoke about when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man. It's very about one evil spirit, right? But then he says that he goes looking for a place where to rest. Does he find a place? No. He does it to the mind of the demon. To go back where? No. He brings how many more? Well, you know, the Bible is not clear here whether there is one plus seven and to cleanse us for 
from all. So how is the condition of a Christian that asks God for forgiveness? It's clean, right? Notice what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 says, 6 and 7. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The condition of us is clean, right? Now we are how? We, we, we are called earthen vessels. You know, when, when they collect the water, or if you remember the, the wedding at Cana, you know, when the, when the wine was gone, what did Jesus ask for? For vessels to be brought, right? And they were empty. Okay, now, consider the Christian like that. An earthen vessel, clean, empty of self, empty of sin. Now, we are supposed to have this treasure, the power, the excellency of God in us. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, it tells us what kind of a vessels are we are supposed to be. He says, if a man therefore purge himself from this, from sin, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify, and meet for the master use, and prepare unto every good work. So that means that when the demon is cast out from a person, that person becomes a vessel, and that vessel, according to Apostle Paul, is a vessel unto honor, sanctify, meet for the master use, and prepare unto every good work. Sanctify, set aside, honor. So that means that when we surrender to the love of Christ and we are cleansed from every defilement, we become that special vessel within a specific work. That means that when we are this vessel, we are ready to be used, right? By whom? By the Lord Jesus. Notice here in, in Review and Herald, February 28, 1889, says, empty vessels, when we empty the soul of every defilement, we are ready for use. When the mind and heart and work by the Spirit, when self is dead, the truth is capable of constant expansion and new development. This is what God wants. He's, this is what He expects from us. We will be expanding, and there will be new developments. But the problem is that according to what we read in the verses of Matthew chapter 12, 43 to 45, there is a danger of leaving that house, in this case I will call it the heart, empty. Okay? If it's left empty, what happens? That demon go, that went around, that was cast out, goes and calls others to come. Therefore, if that happens, the condition is worse. But it doesn't have to be that way. Now, what does the, how does the Bible describe our heart? Wicked, right? Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is the biggest problem that we have. In reality, in our hearts can reside good things and bad things. Now, of course, if we want good things, we need to allow Jesus to come in. If we want our hearts to produce bad things, Jesus won't be there. That's a clear case. Actually, in all the Bible, you will see that there is no neutrality in Christianity. We either are with Christ or with Satan. There's no, no neutrality here. Okay? So, what happens when we do not fill our, our hearts? It says here that seven spirits more wicked than himself will come. 
But do you remember the time in which Jesus cast out a legion of demons? Okay. What is a legion? 100? 5,000? <laughs> okay. The Zara of Ages says that a legion was composed between 3,000 to 5,000. Okay? Now think about this. These men, not the one in Matthew 12, but these other men that Jesus cast out the demons and they asked him to take the pigs, you know, control and so forth. That was a legion. But if we look back at these other men here, it's only one, not a legion. And he returns with how many? Seven. And Jesus says that the condition will be worse than before. Now think about the one that had the legion. How worse it was. There couldn't be no worse than that. So with this in mind, I'd like to ask a question. What would you like to be? None, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's, inter it's, a, it's a question that each, each one has to answer. Now, what is the, the biggest problem that we have? Okay, we realize that it's our heart. Then Proverbs 16.25 gives us a further uh, understanding of what is our problem. It says here, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So when the heart is not in control of Christ, many, many of the different ways will seem correct to us. But the reality is not. Even in the parable of the two ways, Jesus said this is the narrow way and this is what? The broad way. And he saw many walking in the broad way. Why? Because they thought that that was the right way to go. But the end was what? Death as well. In the case of not filling up this earthen vessel with the proper uh, things that they are there, there are a host of stuff that can happen to the person. For example, we, we read this morning in the lesson, can a man serve two masters? What's the answer? The answer is no. Why? Because he will love one and hate the other. One case comes to my mind, and that is of Balaam. What was the problem with Balaam? How did he begin? Actually, let's go back a little bit. He was a prophet of whom? Of God, right? But what was the problem? Did Balaam knew his heart? Did he understand what was in his heart? No, he didn't. Why? Notice what Peter says here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Begins with, Having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with men's voice forbade the mad madness of the prophet. So here is the problem. He was looking for what? The wages of unrighteousness. And that was where? Springing out of his heart. Was he allowing God to work in his heart? Actually, when, when he tried to curse Israel, and he forced himself to be there because he, he, he wanted the money, what came out of his mouth? He couldn't curse Israel, right? He actually blessed them. He actually prophesied. So sometimes, no matter what we do, at the end, whether it's good or bad, 
we will do what God says, not what we want. Another problem that can happen with us, brethren, unfortunately, is that our hearts can become hardened. You remember the Israelites. How blessed were they for the 40 years they were in the, in, in the wilderness? Actually, none of them got sick. None of them died of sickness. They died because they sinned. And God removed his hand and allowed things to happen. But it was because of the hardness of their hearts. Actually, that became unbelief. And they departed from the living God. And Paul exhorts, he says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So sin is very deceitful. Sin can come in many different ways. And God and Satan knows what is our weakness. That's the, that's the difficulty that we have. But we can overcome all this. The Lord has given us the opportunity for us to fill this home, this heart, in such a way that when the devil comes, we will put a stop to him. Let me give you a few examples. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 says, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. If the Holy Spirit is in us, can the devil come and overcome us? He may come and tempt us, but he cannot overcome us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye been rooted and grounded in love. So we need to not only allow Christ and the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts so we can be vessels unto honor, but also we need to allow him to stay there. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 through 16, it says that, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. God has promised us peace. You know, in the last two years and a half, we went through a lot of things. You know, there was a lot of turmoil. But who were the ones that had peace? Who were the ones that had peace, brethren? Us, right? I do believe that we had peace. Yes, amidst all the difficulties that we had, but yes, if we believe that God was in control, there is nothing else more dear to, to us than to have the, the peace of God. Also, we need to allow God to write His law in our hearts. Look at here, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those, those days, say the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me. A people. In other words, brethren, with all this that we have, the religion of Christ means more than forgiveness of sin. There is something that we need to do on our part. In Christ's Object Lesson, page 419 says, the religion of Christ means more than forgiveness of sin. It means taking away our sins and filling the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means divine illumination, rejoicing in God. It means a heart emptied of self and blessed with the abiding presence of Christ. When Christ reigns in the soul, there is purity, freedom from sin. The glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. So that means that it is more than just saying, I am a Christian, I am a forgiven sinner. No, it was more than that. We need to fill the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means more than just saying, I believe in Jesus. 
we must allow the Holy Spirit to work in us in illuminating our minds, rejoicing in God. Now, how can this be accomplished? In My Character and Personality, Volume 1, page 327, says, Every room in the soul temple has become more or less defiled in its cleansing. The cowwebbed closet of conscience is to be entered. The windows of the soul are to be closed earthward and thrown wide open heavenward that the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness may have free access. The memory is to be refreshed by Bible principles. The mind is to be kept clear and pure that it may distinguish between good and evil. So that means every part of our heart, which means the mind, needs to be clean. It's like there is uh, you know, spider webs there, and all this needs to be removed. All this, you can call it trash, it has to be removed. So the, the Holy Spirit can get in and talk to us and tell us, this is your problem, this is your issue, you have to deal with it, bring it to the Lord. And if we consider all these things, we need to realize that then we are filling this earthen vessel for the honor and glory of the Lord. In this hour of ages, in page 324, the last sentence of, this, of that paragraph one says, with our personal acquaintance with Christ and our continual communion, we are at the mercy of the enemy and shall do his bidding in the end. So the appeal to us is that we have to have this, we need to have this personal acquaintance with Christ in our continual communion. If we think about the experience of King David, he, used, he tells us in the book of Psalms that he will pray how many times? Three times, morning, afternoon, and evening. He said, I will look for you. So the, the Lord has given us plenty of information in the Bible for us not to have this experience, not to let our heart, after accepting Jesus, just be let free and open for Satan to come back or whatever demon comes, comes back. What do we need to do then? And in principle, we know what to do. We, we understand that we need to uh, sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. We need to um, have important uh, studies. We need to follow many examples of the Bible. We need to remember also that the transformation of character begins with the renewing of our mind at the likeness of Christ. But now, in practice... How can we, in practice, bring this process to our life? Because this is where the problem comes. We understand. We can read the Bible. But we, to bring it into practice is the difficulty that I see. Do we utilize every opportunity to study the, the Word of God? It's a question that we, we, we need to answer ourselves. What about attending all services of the church? Have you read um, in the pen of inspiration how much information we have, how much we lose when we don't attend the religious services? Not necessarily only Sabbath school, not the divine service or young people's meeting. What about prayer meeting? You know, even business meetings, she says, that it is like a prayer meeting. So that means that Jesus is there. So we need to, to focus our, our attention. See, why be, by beholding, we become changed. Whatever is more important for us, that's what we will be. Okay? What about participating in Bible study programs that are offered? I heard it was announced that you are going to have a music camp. You remember the verse that I read before, that we need to praise the Lord in singing, psalms, and so forth? That is important, too. You know, what about when you drive? What do you listen? Do you listen to the news? I'm not saying that you shouldn't. 
Or do you listen to maybe the Bible, Bible readings or maybe uh, the testimonies? Or you know, What do you listen? It is what we, what we see, what we hear, is what we become. So we need to be very selective as to what goes into our mind. Like, we need to think um, things above. The Word of God needs to dwell in us. Okay? We need to allow ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How much of the, of the Holy Spirit do we talk about? Not much, including myself. You know, I prepare so many Bible studies. I go and visit so many people. And sometimes I remember one sister, um, David and Anita knows her, uh, Sister Basemore. One time I went to pick her up, and she was very serious. And I was driving her to church, and she said, you know, I pray for you people a lot. And I was like, oh, boy, what is she going to say? And she said, you know, you are doing too much good that I think you don't have time for the Lord. And I bet you that hit me really hard. Because I, I, I was thinking, she's right. I may be reading the Bible, preparing the study for somebody else, but what about feeding myself? You know, I may have all the answers of the world, but what good does it do to me? Personally. So I always remember that. She, but she was very serious. Very serious. So we need to let our mind, brethren, dwell on things that are worthy of praise and virtue. Yes, the world is full of many different things that, you know, we, we, we may put our mind in, in, in such a mode that we will think only on the bad things. But in realizing, you know, what is, what is happening in, in the world today, the only thing that comes to my mind is Jesus is coming soon. This world is coming to an end. What else can we ask, really? So we need to be selective also about what we read, what we see, our friends, and also the kind of communion that we have. So to wrap this up, brethren, the question that we each have to ask ourselves is, are you and I filling our hearts with things that are good? That's, that's the question that I want to leave in your mind. Because our mind needs to be focused on those things that are more important. Christ is willing to forgive each and every one of us, including me. Okay? But we need to allow him to work fully and completely in our hearts to remove every stain of sin. Another question, are we willing to let him do that? That's the, I do believe that those two important questions need to be answered because the time will come and we all know this, that grace will close. And then what will happen? What will be our, our, our fate? Where are we going to be standing? And to close, I will give you the, the two Bible verses that I love the most. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. There is where I do believe that trusting in the Lord, confiding in Him, and trusting that every word that is in the Bible will come true because He is the one that gives us that strength. He is the one that gives us that peace that no matter what happened in this world, nothing will take away that if you make Jesus your best friend and your Savior. Amen.
And then after that, we will kneel down, kneel down and have two prayers. One prayer will be a special prayer for Brother Nello, because for those of you who don't know, he's going to have a surgery soon. And so we want to make sure to pray that God's will may be done in that, in that surgery. So we'll have one prayer, and then Brother Moreno will close with the, with the second prayer. Okay. So let's go ahead and have our closing hymn. And we will sing together hymn number 134. Number 134. So we will kneel down, and I would like to invite Brother David, and he will pray um, especially for Brother Brother Nello, and then Brother Moreno will close with the final prayer. Our kind, merciful, and loving Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord, thankful for your intervention in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you make a way of escape for us even when we are not deserving of it. And now, Lord, as we consider our spiritual strength and health, 
We are thankful that you have given us the opportunity to study your word. And knowing that we have this great spiritual blessing, we know, Lord, that you are also willing to bless us in the things of this life as well. And so we're asking, Lord, in a special way that you would be with Brother Moldovan at this time. That your grace that you've given to him, your assurance in his life of sins forgiven, will also be extended to him in his physical health as well. Amen. And as you are with him and you know the, the case that is before him now, we ask, Lord, that you would be with the doctors, with those who you have blessed with wisdom and knowledge, that your hand would guide and that all things in all times would be done for your honor and for your glory. Amen. We ask, Lord, for your strength and protection here, not because any of us is worthy of it, but because we believe in the promise and we claim it today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, as we kneel down before thy throne of grace, we are so thankful, Lord, that you have given us life this day to be together and to participate during these meetings. Lord, we thank you that you are still striving with our hearts. And especially, Lord, we pray for, for the young people. Satan is really going after them, trying to see how he can take them in the wrong way, in the wrong path. We, we pray, Lord, for mercy for them and also for us. That we may understand, Lord, that the needed preparation that we need to, to make in order to be saved fully and completely and, and enjoy eternity with you. You have given us this opportunity, Lord, to be together on this Sabbath day, and we ask you to, be, to remain with us throughout this day, to help us, Lord, to keep in, in our minds all the thoughts that have been presented today, and that we may make that, uh, that, that decision to follow you, Lord, to the end. Please bless us, forgive us. We pray, Lord, for the needy ones and also for the sick ones. You know them by name, and we ask you, Lord, to um, intervene if it's thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I thank you each and every one of you for being here. I pray that you have been blessed, and you are invited to partake in the fellowship lunch and also be here for young peoples. We are now dismissed. <laughs>